Good morning, everyone. So glad that you're here online as well. You're taking time out of your week to worship God, to say thank you for what he's done. And you'll never get a return on an investment you never made. And we're investing in a lot of areas. You could be investing in your education, which is great. Investing in your career, which is great. Maybe investing in your relationship with others, which is wonderful. But be careful that you're not invested, you're investing in all those places and you never invested in your spiritual life. Because your spiritual life is the core of who you are. There's a scripture in the Bible that says this, above all, this is God's intent for you. He goes, above all, I wish that you prosper and be in health as your soul prospers. What he's saying is I want you to do really well in life. I want you to be whole. I want you to do well in your endeavors. But I want it to be in relationship to your soul being healthy, the core of who you are. I'm so proud of every one of you that you're investing in your spiritual life. The Bible says this, the physical exercise profits, but spiritual exercise even profits more. So I'm glad you're doing that. We as a church, we're moving towards Easter. And this is what we're saying. We want to bring our friends and relatives to experience Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. I believe there's people out there that are ready to come if you just invite them. Let's put, write down some names by faith and pray over them. Put their cards in that card that represents them coming to Jesus and them coming with you or coming in their own car and believing that this Easter will be the greatest Easter that we've ever seen, that our friends and relatives, someone's praying for them that they'll come to Jesus. How many believe that our friend, this Easter, that could be a big day? Also, we are, uh, the school, I want to mention that, it will be the first Christian school in, in that area. There's a whole bunch of Muslim schools, but we're going to be the first Christian school in that area in Kenya. And our resurrection offering is going to go to that. We have to build it. So it's not like we're just, we have to build the school. It doesn't exist. There, there's just a field. We got to build the school. We could build a school. If we built it here in America, it might cost us a million dollars. But building it over there only costs us like sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000. would not it be great for us to build that school? And, and that offering, we're going to do that. We also have one more thing that the Lord has put in our, on our radar. We are launching a church in Arizona this year. I went down to Arizona, and, um, and this is actually, this is the auto, one of the auditoriums. There's four auditoriums like that. It's a movie theater. And there's been a pastor, one, wonderful man of God and his wife, that have invested right around 20 years in this area. And they've been praying for someone to take over the church. Somehow we're on their radar out of all the churches in America. And he's thinking, man, I, I know there's a bigger dream. I want to see it happen. I just met him last month. I never met him. And God put our church on his heart that he's going to hand over that campus and another building for us to finish what he started. Isn't this an honor that God would give us this privilege? One of our pastors, I already talked to him, is being shipped out to Arizona pretty soon. Pastor, who is it? I'll let you know later. But this is what we want to do, our, our resurrection offering. And remember, anytime we're talking about an offering, it's free will. No one has to do anything. But I really believe that it's a great investment that we could build a school to raise little boys and little girls, teach them, get them some education, but also teach them about Jesus. Isn't that great? Great investment. Also, we're going to go to, we're going to go to air, this area here and people are going to get saved, become disciples of Jesus Christ. Now, this is what's happening. He's transferring over everything to us. All we have to do is take on the little debt that's there. The building is probably worth millions of dollars. They owe total debt on their church is $791,000. And this is what I would love to do. 
I would love to have that paid off so we're not launching a church with more debt. We can't go church to church and have more debt, more debt, more debt. I want to service people, not service debt. How many believe that we could get this done, just like knock it out? So how does that happen on Resurrection Sunday? There might be, some, there might be 791 people who are saying the debt's 791,000. There might be 791,000, I mean, 700, 791 people that could give 1,000 and maybe 1,500 people to give 500 or, or 3,000 people give 250. It doesn't matter. The idea is we all do our part. Maybe I, when I mention a school that's going to cost us like 60,000, 70,000 to build the school, there might be someone that says, I got that. God bless me. I was wondering what it was for. And you might be saying, I'm ready to give that. And I want to make it a legacy that we built a church. And come on, in Kenya, wouldn't that be awesome that's going to reach Africa? We're, let's pray about it, whatever God puts on your heart. But how many believe that we could launch out a church in Arizona and build a school in Kenya? We could do that and resurrect a school and resurrect a church in Kenya. So, I mean, in, in Arizona. Father, we just thank you, Lord, that we have an opportunity as a church to share what you want to do. Participate in your vision to reach people all over the world there's people addicted suicidal even today in this room and today's going to be their day of freedom because whoever calls on your name is made whole is set free we thank you holy spirit show us teach us reveal to us this truth as we study you're the only one that can save a soul we can't save a soul. You can save a soul. Holy Spirit, have your way in this place. You're the only one that can give new life, spiritual birth, cause someone to be born again. Do it today, Father. Holy Spirit, have your way. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, everyone, for coming today. We've been on a, a series of teachings, and this has been the title of the series, is Jesus saved me. Say with me. Jesus saved me. Now when we talk about that word Jesus saved me, you might be asking in this room right now, save me from what? That's a really good question. There is a problem and every one of us need to be saved. But we cannot fully appreciate the good news message if we don't fully understand the real danger and the state of hopelessness we are truly in because of our sin. So what are we saved from? The judgment on sin. Until we know what we're saved from, the good news has no value. We must know our true status before God. Only after we're truly aware that sin doesn't come free, but it comes with severe consequences, will we call on Jesus to save us and develop a sense of urgency to see our friends and relatives be saved. Every wrong choice, comes with a consequence. I think the world calls it karma. What you put out comes back. God doesn't call it karma. God calls it a harvest. And he says, God should not be mocked. Whatever a man sows, he will reap. It's crazy to think that I could live however I want to live, do whatever I want to do, hurt whoever I want to hurt, say whatever I want to say, and think it would be consequence free. There's no such thing. Every action comes with a result. Every seed that's planted comes with a harvest. It's very simple. If you plant tomato seeds, don't be surprised if you get some tomatoes. I'm so surprised I got tomatoes. Why would you be surprised? Because I planted tomato seeds and I didn't know it was in direct correlation to the seed. 
But I think some of us are living that kind of life that we think I could plant bad seed, but yet still get good results. It doesn't work that way. There will be one day that every single one of us will give an account for every sin that we've committed. Fact. After death is judgment. There will be a judgment day in every one of our futures. Every one of us will come face to face with Jesus Christ. We have two appointments that we can't miss, we can't put off, we can't show up late for. And what are those two appointments? Let's look at Hebrews 9.27. And the scripture says, And just as it is appointed and destined for all men to die once. I'm not speaking theory. This is fact. One day, every single one of us have an appointment with death. The death of your body. But it will not be the death of your soul. The real you is not the body you live in that's growing old, that has pain. The real you is your spiritual man, your soul. So we're all going to die. So since we're going to die, wouldn't it make sense to at least think about it? You have car insurance. Why do you have car insurance? In case you get an accident. Some of you have life insurance. Because you want to make sure that if you, when you do die, that your family has some income to live on. But what a shame would you live this whole life with car insurance, medical insurance, life insurance, and you have no eternal assurance. I don't know what's going to happen after I die. Well, let me tell you. Well, how do we know? Because God's word is absolutely perfect. Has zero contradictions. And it's absolutely 100% true. Your opinion is not 100% true. Your theories aren't 100% true. But God's word has been proven true from one generation to the next generation. And there have been men that have done everything they could to disprove the authenticity of the word of God. And they've come up empty. True. And this is fact. And just as it is appointed and destined for all men to die once and after this comes certain judgment. It doesn't say you might be judged. It says you will be judged. There's church culture nowadays, even under church leadership, doesn't, doesn't want to talk about this stuff. They're saying, you know, if you really want to grow a church, don't talk about sin, don't talk about judgment, don't talk about hell. Give them motivational talk. I don't want you to be motivated and going to hell. I don't want you to be happy destroying your life. I love you enough to let you know there's some certainties in your future. One day you will die, and after that, you have a destiny, an appointment with judgment. Will you be ready? Or won't you? 
I want to further discuss. So fact number one, after death is judgment for sin. The second point I want to just develop a little bit. If one of the major roles of the Holy Spirit is to make us aware of the future judgment on sin. The Holy Spirit, which is God's Spirit, is the only one that could make you aware of what I'm talking about. It could convict you to make you realize, wait a second. It could give you an urgency to think, I know I'm a sinner. But it could bring faith in your heart to call on Jesus. I don't know, Pastor, but what you're saying is making my heart beat and I'm starting to think I'm not ready for that day. Only the Spirit of God can cause that thought and that awareness. And I'm praying that you'll be aware that one day you'll die and you will stand before Jesus Christ and you will face judgment for every single thing you've done. In Hebrews, I mean, in John chapter 16, it says this, but I tell you the truth. Who's saying this? Some, Jesus is saying this. She goes, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. Now, Jesus talking right before he dies, suffers, he's buried. This is before he's buried and, and he resurrects from the dead on Easter day. That's what we're celebrating. He goes, but I tell you the truth. It's better that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper the comforter, the advocate, the intercessor, the counselor, the strengthener, the one that'll stand by you, will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him, the Holy Spirit, to you, to be in close fellowship with you. Stop there for a minute. He goes, I'm going. But when I go, something's going to be better for you. Some of us have said this, I wish I could have lived and walked with Jesus. And Jesus is saying, I got something better than that. You won't walk with me, I will live in you. I will make a way. For my love to live in you, my peace to live in you, my strength to live in you, my freedom to live in you. Come on, my hope to live in you. I'll, I will make a way for me and you to have a relationship and a friendship that's more intimate than you've ever had with anybody. What Jesus is saying here, when I send you the Holy Spirit, I'm sending you my spirit. And this is what he will do in John chapter 16, verse 8. And he, when he comes, will convict the world about the guilt of sin and the need of a Savior. If the Holy, I want you to get, if God's Spirit makes us aware of our sin, then we're in line and this teaching is in line with God's spirit. It goes on to say, he'll convict us, the world, about the guilt of sin and the need for a savior and about righteousness and about judgment. And about righteousness and about judgment. Now, the word righteousness means this. He's going to let us know there's a standard of right living. And he's going to let us know you've fallen short of that standard. Now, why is that important today in 2022? It's important today in 2022 because we want to get rid of all standards. In 
universities, they're teaching this type of false doctrine and they're acting like it's truth and it's just opinion. They're teaching there's nothing absolutely wrong. There's nothing absolutely right. It's just up to you to decide. You're the God. Now, why would we want to surrender standards of right living? Because we don't want to be accountable to it. I want to be able to live however I want to live without anybody telling me it's wrong. And I know how to get rid of the conviction. I'll just erase God from the history books. But the Holy Spirit is speaking. And he has an assignment because he loves us. And the reason I'm preaching this is because I love you. I want you to know. If you have cancer, the doctor's not helping you. If he's telling you that you don't have cancer, you're going to be fine. But the, there's a good doctor. If he tells you, son, you got stage four cancer, this is how we can begin to fight it. How many believe that it's loving to let people know their true condition? What? So I got cancer. The doctors get together and say, hey, let's make him feel good. Why don't we just tell him he could, he, there's nothing wrong and just let him live his life. He only has two months to live. But you know what? At least he'll be happy. <laughs> I'm not here to preach you into happiness. I'm here to preach you into eternity. Wholeness. Freedom. Restoration, purpose, and build your faith in the only Savior, Jesus. I want to know the truth. Don't lie to me. Tell me my true condition. Because if I know my true condition, I could fight a true enemy. And God is saying, I've sent my Holy Spirit to convince you, convict you of the guilt of your sin. That you're guilty. That there's going to be a day of judgment. And there's a standard of right living. And I just, I'm so grateful that we could be saved. I'm so grateful that we could be forgiven. I'm so grateful that we can have a new start. And I'm so grateful that God could raise my standard of living. Is God good? The judgment. What is the judgment? For sin. The judgment for sin or the judgment for the unsaved is eternal separation from God. Now, you might not think that's a big deal. But everything good that you enjoy comes from God. The Bible says every good and perfect gift comes from God. Everyone, listen, that have rejected God and his loving offer of salvation, God's offering salvation and eternal life, he's offering salvation and eternal life through faith in his son's sacrifice, everyone who rejects that offer will have to live with their decision for eternity. You know what that means? You can reject the offer of forgiveness, freedom, new life, God's spirit living in you. You have to know your status. Some of us know 
our credit score status. What's your status? 747. That's what, I thought that was a plane. No, it's not a plane. It's my credit score. Don't you mistake that. I'm very proud of that. And you're so concerned about your credit score because you're trying to qualify for a house. You're trying to qualify for a car. And you're proud of your good credit. And that's good. Great. But how crazy that you qualify for your car, you qualify for your house, but you're disqualified from heaven. And you had no concern about that. I don't care about that. What do you mean you don't care about that? Are you saying you don't care about that because you'd rather remain ignorant? You know what that's called? Ostrich mentality. You know what an ostrich does when he faces danger? He puts his head in the sand. And he feels like if I put my head in the sand, maybe the lion can't see me. Some of us intentionally, you're putting your head in the sand. You're believing theories that are just theories because you don't want to be held responsible for the truth that you know you're going to die. You don't know what's going to happen after death. You're concerned about it, but not enough to think about it. And I just hope if I just act like it's not there, that it won't be there. I got a grandson. He really thinks that when he puts his head underneath the blanket, I can't see him. It's fun. Where's Xander? He goes. <laughs> his whole body's hanging out. His legs are kicking. But he thinks we can't see him. And then when he lifts up the blanket, he tricked us all. There's Xander. Don't deceive yourself. Put your head on, you can put your head under the blanket. But the truth is one day you will die. And right after that, there will be judgment. And we will be accountable for every wrong thing that we did. But I have good news for you. It doesn't end there. Jesus came to pay the price, be judged so you wouldn't have to be judged, so you could be forgiven and have eternal life. Isn't there great news? Come on, aren't you glad that there's great news that you can be saved from the judgment of your bad decisions? The judgment is eternal separation from God. I, I want to say something before I read the last, this last this scripture. The next time the unsaved see Jesus, he will come as their judge because they rejected him as their savior. To be separated from God is a big deal. That's the judgment. Because you're separated from God's peace, his joy, his love, his hope, his light, his happiness, beauty, sunshine, flowers, nature, air, family, relationships, and all that is good for eternity. And you might be saying in this room, I feel like I'm separated already. I used to have joy, but I'm depressed. I used to have confidence, but I sure feel hopeless. I'm experiencing some of that separation right now, and I'm going to say you're right. And the only one that can save you or make you whole and restore your emotions and set you free from the depression and set you free from the anxiety, no counselor can do it, no pill can do it, but there's somebody that died for all that judgment and his name is Jesus Christ. And whoever calls on his name can be saved and set free and be made whole. It's an experience. It's real because God's real. But the judgment, look at the scripture. It's separation from God. 2 Thessalonians 1, 7 through 9 says, when, say with me, when. Amen. Not if, but when. The Lord Jesus appears from heaven. What does that mean? 
that Jesus is coming back. He will come with his mighty angels in flaming fire, bringing judgment on those who don't know God and on those who refuse to obey the good news. I reject it. I don't want it. You can refuse to offer forgiveness. You can refuse God's love. You can refuse his freedom. You could put your head in the sand. But understand, it will be your choice. And those who refuse to obey the good news of our Lord Jesus, they will be punished with eternal forever and ever destruction. This day is going to be so bad, there'll be no bouncing back. Some of us have done it our way. And every time you go around that circle, you fall. You hurt yourself. You hurt the people around you. You're in deeper depression, deeper anger, deeper losses. It's what you're experiencing. But and then you think, I'm going to get up from this. And you lie to yourself. And you say this, I'm going to go around one more time doing it my way. This time, it's going to be okay. You know what that's called? False hope. There's a saying, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. Stop being cray-cray. They will be punished with eternal destruction. Look at this. Forever separated from the Lord and from his glorious power. The, the moment, the opportunity to be saved is by believing a simple message. Admit I'm a sinner. Are there any admitted sinners in the house? Like me. We've all lied, we've all cheated, we've all lusted, all stolen something, little something, something. But the truth is, Jesus did not come to judge us. Jesus came to save us. Jesus came to pay the price because he loves you. And his mission is for you to be with him for eternity. Today's your day opportunity to accept the good news, you and I can be forgiven. So how are we saved? We're going to end it with this last verse. And this is how we're saved. By trusting in the suffering and death of Jesus as a full payment for our sin. Jesus was judged so that we wouldn't have to be judged. We must know we cannot save ourselves. It is only by believing in his sacrifice for our sins that we're safe from judgment. In Romans 5, 6, the Bible says why we were still helpless. You know what that means? Powerless to provide for our salvation. That means we can't save ourselves. At the right time where we're hopeless, some of you right now are hopeless. The depression is so great, you want to die. But while you were hopeless and you tried everything else, you tried to numb your pain, you tried to medicate yourself, you've been going from one relationship to the next relationship, nothing's working out. God is saying while you were in a condition, while you were in your worst place, while you were doing your thing, just at the right time, Christ died as a substitute for the ungodly. 
that God sent his only son to be judged for you and I. But God clearly shows and proves he loves us, his love for us, by the fact that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Christ was judged in our place. Therefore, since we now have been justified or declared free from guilt of sin, no judgment by his blood, by his life, how much more certain, certain it is that we will be saved from the wrath or judgment of God through Christ. There's salvation for judgment through just faith in what Christ has done. What does that mean? You did the crime. And your big uncle paid the bail so you could get out. Just accept the good news and walk out because the payment has been paid. God loves, someone said, God loves me. So today, what do we say from judgment? Now, I love you enough as a pastor to not tickle your ears, but get you ready for heaven. And I love you. That's why I do this. I'm not a politician. I'm here to make sure that you're ready for eternity. And not only ready for eternity, ready for your life today. Because without Jesus in your life, without the power of the Holy Spirit, the strengthener, the comforter, the stabilizer, the standby, the good counselor, that, that one, you're going to be lost. Your relationships won't work. Your mind won't work right. Your emotions won't work right. And this is what's going to happen. You're going to be confused. Like, where did I go? What is my life about? What do you think? Do you think you're going to really fix you? Or do you think you're going to, like, find someone and they're going to fix you? If you marry me, you'll make me whole. Run, 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 run. Corre, rápido, go. You got to tell them, no, I cannot make you whole. You better get that from Jesus first. Uh-uh. But I got good news. God loves you. You could be forgiven. You have deep depression. You could be set free. You could be sure. Get your assurance about eternal life. Jesus will save you. And it's a gift. Will you receive salvation today? Let's all stand up. Come on. Did we receive something from God today? Jesus saved me. I love you guys. Easter, let's bring our friends to the relatives so they can hear, hear about Jesus, how he saves them. Now, I'm going to dismiss in just a second. But before we leave, I want to give an opportunity. Like it was given, check this out, a thief on a cross. When Jesus was hanging there, dying, being judged on our behalf as our substitute, we did the crime, we sinned, we deserve to be judged. But God loved us so much, he goes, the sin must be paid for. But I'll send my innocent son to suffer, die, experience the anguish so they could be forgiven and receive eternal life, receive eternal life as a gift. Salvation is a gift. Say it with me. It's a what? You don't earn it. It's free. It's not what you've done. It's what he's done. If I ask you today, if today, today, by the end of the day, you died, and you stand before God in judgment, are you sure that you're in right standing with God? What's your status? I got a good credit score. I'm not asking that. I'm a good citizen. I'm not asking that. I'm a Republican, a Democrat. I'm not asking that. I'm asking, are you saved? Are you forgiven? Are you sure that you're in right standing with God? He's the only one that can save you. He's the only one that can make you right. He's the only one that could give you forgiveness and eternal life and wholeness. It's not only a, a quantity of life, 
It's a quality of life. It's in Jesus. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord is saved. But if you're saying, Pastor, I think I go to heaven because I'm a pretty good person. Nowhere does it say in the Bible that if you're good enough, you get into heaven. You could only get into heaven by putting, placing your faith, not in you, not in religion, but in Jesus. He's the Savior. He died for your sins. He conquered death. So you could have a relationship with him. All he wants is to fill your heart with his love. That's it. And help you overcome. You could be born again today. You could be saved. You could become a brand new person. God's spirit could come and live in you and make you different. It could happen today. Are you done doing it your way? This could be your moment. I'm going to count to three. There has to be a day like the thief in a cross that turned to Jesus. He's dying because he's a thief. And he turns to Jesus and says, Jesus, will you remember me when you go into paradise? And then Jesus turned to him. You put your faith in me, today you'll be with me in heaven. Today, not tomorrow. As soon as you die, you're going to wake up with me. That's all I needed. Thank you. Jesus was not there to judge him. He said, well, how dare you ask me to save you after you've been thieving and conniving your whole life, hustler. Jesus didn't say that. He goes, what? You put your faith in me? You got it. That's all you need because I'm the Savior. I forgive you and I give you right standing. Isn't that amazing that God is that good? You don't have to earn it. It's a gift. Refuse or accept? I'm going to count to three and I want you to raise your hand if you're saying, Pastor, I'm not sure if I were to die right now and I'll face, I'll face God in judgment that I'm saved. I'm not sure. It takes a real man or woman to admit where they're at. Do not be the ostrich and put your head in the sand. Maybe tomorrow, let's act like it's not happening. Today's your day. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. You know, in Compton, they had three murders this weekend. There's young people that were here that are gone through eternity. They're gone. There's no redoing it. Death, judgment. That's it. No purgatory, no second chances, no reincarnation. Done. Death, judgment. Thank God that God loves you so much that he's placed you here to let you know that he loves you and he wants to save you and he's letting you know about your certain future, making sure you're prepared by placing your faith in Christ. Jesus will save you. If you're saying, Pastor, I'm not sure I'm right with God. I'm not sure I'm going to die right now. I'd go to heaven. But I'm done doing it my way. I want to be saved today. I want Jesus to save me. I want Jesus to forgive me. I believe he died for me. He paid the price so I could be saved. I want to be saved. I want to know before I leave here that I go to heaven. One, if that's you, you say, Pastor, I'm not sure, but I want to make sure. I want to give my life to Jesus. Two, when I say three, raise your hands all over this building. Jesus publicly died for you. Will you publicly say, I want to be saved today. When I say three, raise your hands. One, two, three, raise your hands all over this building. I want to be saved. And I'm not sure I'm right with God. I see that hand. I see that hand there. Hallelujah. I see the hand there. I see the hand there. I see the hand in the back. I see, see that hand way over there in the back. I want those to raise their hands. This is what you're doing. The Holy Spirit's letting you know. Call on Jesus. He'll save you. If you raise your hand, will you do me one more big favor? Will you leave your seat? and come up and give me the honor and privilege to pray with you. If you raise your hand, come up here real quick. This is what you're saying. I'm leaving my old life in those seats and I'm following Jesus. Come on, let's give him a hand. Ask your neighbor. If you want to go up there, I'll go up there with you. Come on, church, let's celebrate. Someone's receiving eternal life and being set free from judgment. Come on, church. Let's come on, celebrate online. Give your life to Jesus. Raise your hand there. Get ready. We're going to pray with you. Come on, church. God, heaven has been waiting for this moment. Someone's daughter's coming. Someone's mama is coming. Someone's daddy is coming. Come on, someone's. Come on, someone's son is coming up here today. They've been praying for them. This is their day of salvation.
right, Chris has given his life to Jesus. It takes a real man to do this. I can't do it on my own. Kevin's given his life to Jesus today. Come on. That's good news. That's good news. It's your day. New start. You know what? God loves you. You're not an accident. You're not a mistake. All the hurt, the pain, the heartbreak you've gone through. God's been waiting for this moment. Said, so please, I see it. Will you allow me to help you? I'll help you. I'll save you. We could go through this together. I'll stand by you. I won't leave you. It's powerful. It makes me confident because people will leave you. People will disappoint you. And you'll even disappoint yourself. But even when you don't believe in you, God believes in you. God believes in you. Come on, son. You could do it. Come on, daughter. I'm with you. You're no longer alone. We could overcome together. I love it. Okay. You're making a decision to follow Jesus. You're not just coming to get saved. You're saying, I'm done doing it my way. I want to follow Jesus. You're going to commit to following Jesus. He's going to save you. You're going to put your faith in him. And then I need you to commit. Come every Sunday. You have 168 hours a week. Give God at least one of them. You'll never get transformation until you commit to learning, growing, developing. And that's going to come through exposure. You learn how to do your dirty stuff by someone mentoring you. And God says, will you allow me to mentor you now? I'm going to show you how to win. I'm going to show you how to overcome. I'm going to show you how to be a father. I'm going to show you how to be a mother. I'm going to show you how to be integral. I'm going to show you how to overcome that addiction. I'm going to show you. And then you're going to help others. It's going to happen today. I love you guys. And I'll tell you this. I ain't going nowhere. I'm going to be here till Jesus comes back. You know why? God wants some consistency in your life. Come on, this church is going to be here till Jesus comes back. We're not closing the doors. We're here for you. We're a family. Someone say we're family. We're doing this together. Okay? After this is baptism. Baptism represents this. When you go in the water, we don't like sprinkle you. We dunk you. Boom! And you know what it represents? The old you is buried. And you're letting everybody know, I'm following Jesus. And when you're coming out of the water, you're letting everybody know, I'm not that same old person. I'm following Jesus now. That's your next step. You got to repent and then get baptized. Join our classes. Membership. Church. The three levels. Level one, salvation, baptism, membership. Level one. Level two of growth here, Holy Wars one, Holy Wars two, Holy Wars three, discipleship. For some of you, it's time to finally commit. It's my home church. If this is your home church, make it official. I want to know who I'm pastoring. Let's do this together. Let's go all the way. Give me some time with you today at one o'clock right after service. Become an official member. It's going to be your day. Let's pray. Let's pray. Repeat after me. Say, Jesus. I know I'm a sinner that's earned judgment. But I believe that you loved me so much that you sent your son to be judged, to pay the payment for my sins so that I can be forgiven and set free from all judgment all guilt I receive it now I receive forgiveness I receive freedom freedom from addiction freedom from the past I receive your forgiveness and I forgive everybody that has hurt me I let it go today I confess you Jesus as my Lord and Savior I am saved 
I receive the free gift of eternal life and salvation. Devil, get out of my mind. Get out of my body. Leave my family. I've made a decision. Jesus is my Lord and Savior. And I will follow him for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name. I pray, amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand. Everybody online that said that, let us know online. Call in, text us, send a message. We love you, church. Remember, this is God's for you. There's no one could come against you. We have membership class. If you want to complete level one today, love to see you there. We have lunch for you. Guang Poyo, if you want to show up. Love you guys so much. Remember, this is God's for you. There's no one could come against you. You guys are amazing. Love you guys so much. You need prayer. We got a team that love to pray with you. I want to make sure we got everybody covered here. Let's get their information and help them with their next step. Baptism, membership, Holy Warriors 1. Love you guys so much.